no-code tools, maligned by data engineers but beloved by businesses. What are no-code tools, and why are they so commonplace and in demand when most seem to prefer not to use them? Do they really replace tons of SQL or Python with just a few clicks? And most importantly for you, are they worth learning? So we're going to use the more accurate term low code. There may have been some attempts at truly fully no code data tools out there, but I don't think that they lasted. In reality, they all have at least some sort of expression language or similar to expand on the basic functionality. You'll also see references to this as a low code trend. While there are a lot of new tools popping up every day, I'm not sure if it's really a trend. Here's DTS, Data Transformation Services, the precursor to SSIS from 1998. I'm not sure what else came before DTS, but low-code drag-and-drop tools have been part of data for quite some time. So what do these tools promise? By being more accessible, there can be more contributors to build and maintain pipelines, enabling more collaboration. The need for expensive engineering teams is reduced, and many promise your analysts can do their own data pipelines. The marketing promises simple, easy, seamless data processes that anybody can do in minutes. You can probably see why this annoys data engineers. So the first thing we need to address is that coding is not programming. Coding is about converting logic into machine understanding code. It's what you imagine, line of code in a code editor. Programming is the analysis and conceptualization of a network of logic to solve a problem. The steps to build IKEA furniture is a program. Video games like Minecraft can have programming macros where you give the logic of what to do in specific situations. Development is about delivering a product, which includes the program as well as the design, documentation, monitoring, testing, maintenance, and so on. So in my mind, coding is the technical piece, programming is the logical piece, and development is the professional piece. And I say that to point out that the low-code promise of anyone can do it doesn't really work. You still need a team skilled in programming and development to build solid, scalable pipelines that work for your users. So these tools are more accessible and will allow more people to be involved, especially teams with talented analysts who maybe don't want to spend all day in Python, but are skilled with the logic and development pieces. But don't think that low-code tools will eliminate the need for engineering. The marketing that anybody can build pipelines on their own seems like a recipe for disaster. And then the whole set up pipelines in minutes marketing is just ridiculous. If that ever worked, there wouldn't be tons of data engineers trying to make pipelines function daily. Data pipelines are often some of the most fragile and clunky software there is. Data is inconsistent, it's missing, constantly changes scale, analytics requirements change so rapidly that app development looks slow in comparison. So whether you use code or low-code options, it's not going to be quick and easy. So now that we've gotten past some of the marketing, is there any values to these tools? Yeah, there's certainly a use case or no one would be using them. Low-code tools can allow fewer engineers to get more done, but with more limitations. If you're doing common ingestion connections to popular, well-supported platforms, consuming files, or collecting data from simple APIs, most tools will support that. There's no reason to spend a bunch of resources reinventing the wheel. They're also valuable if you have a small but capable data team. They need to split their focus between analysis, reporting, data modeling, and ETL. They don't have the time to fully commit to engineering pipelines, so low-code tools can ease that pressure and let them split their time more evenly across the analytics. But if you want the full flexibility to create pipelines and analytics platforms the way that you want, you'll inevitably hit a wall with what the low-code tools can do. It's probably smart to have a plan to transition to a process that allows for more code solutions as needed. Ideally, you'll find a tool that allows for both low-code and code options. For instance, I did a lot of SSIS for a few years. At the start, I was doing a lot of the drag and drop transformations, but by the end, my SSIS packages were mostly orchestrations calling for C-sharp scripts that did most of the work. It wasn't perfect, scaling isn't great in SSIS, someone trying to modify the packages would need to know C-sharp, but it still allowed for a lot of flexibility. 
Personally, I want to see more tools that let you do low code or code interchangeably. We could use connectors for the basics and Python for more complex needs, or supplement our basic connections with custom monitoring and automation. I don't have a favorite that does this yet. I'm hoping to try out more of these tools in the future but I'm hoping that more are moving in this direction. If you're in the process of trying to find the right BI tools for your needs, be sure to check out this video on some tips in the tool picking process.